What is up fellow YouTube artists and aspiring artists? It is Mike here with Aerosol Custom Spray Paint Art. I'm proudly coming to you from sunny California, kind of sunny at least, out here on the road. I haven't had any time to paint. Apologize for the lack of videos coming your way. Hauling stuff out of the RV here, setting it up in an RV park or a random spot and filming a video it just hasn't been in the cards. Today I'm filming a Q&A video to answer some of your questions that have been asked over the year or so this channel's been going. Definitely overdue. Definitely something I'm gonna be doing moving forward. So if you have future questions to ask and you wanna see them answered in a Q&A video just like this one, leave them in the comments section below. When I do the next video, that video's comment section will be the new set of questions for the next video. Quick bit of additional news. I've had a great time traveling in this RV with my wife, my little dog traveling around selling art. We are Canadian and we are in the United States. Therefore, we cannot legally work and do live events and sell our stuff without a visa. Therefore, we haven't been painting live. We haven't been doing any events. Also, we're uh, planning to wrap this trip up a little bit early and head home to Edmonton. So soon enough, I will be painting again. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep you guys busy with some information uh, about spray paint art and answer some questions. Are you guys ready? Let's go. All right, first question here that I have from Chris Douglas says, Hey Aristotle, have you done a tutorial for making cities? I have not. I have dabbled with making cities in my own art. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself an authority on it. I don't use it too much in my paintings, but I will keep that in mind moving forward. Maybe something you guys might be interested in. Next question here is Clash with Landon. Does a dust mask work? I think he's referring to wearing a respirator when you paint. It does not work. It does not take out all of the harmful solvents and whatnot in the spray paint. Use a proper respirator. There is no excuse for this. Do you have to be a certain age to sell art? This question comes from Nat Owls 15 I don't believe so. I believe they're like four or five years five-year-old artists who have sold paintings for thousands and thousands of dollars. So if someone wants to buy your art, you are good to sell it. Check your state, country laws. I don't want to get you in, in trouble, but I think you're fine. Next question is from author Beverly KD. Uh, and she's asking if the painting is done on the shiny side of the board. So this is a question I get asked all the time. A ton of questions about poster board in general. Uh, rule of thumb is you always paint on the shiny side of an object. Typically, any shiny object should work for your spray paint art. Make sure it's clean, free of debris, you should be good to go. Uh, the reason you need that shiny side is because regular paper, the paint will just soak through and nothing will stay on the actual you know, side that you want the image on. Shiny side of pretty much anything works when it comes to poster board. Make sure you're painting on the shiny side. Not gonna answer any more poster board questions moving forward related to that specific part of it. So now you guys have your answer. Next question here is from Annie Summer. Hey, sorry for the dumb question, uh, but with what you are drawing, but with what you are drawing the tree, I mean, what paint? So this was posted on a painting of a tree. Uh, I do use spray paint with brushes from time to time, meaning I spray the spray paint off onto a scrap piece of poster board, grab a brush and go in and paint. So still spray paint, just not sprayed on to the canvas. Next question is from I Watch Your Vids. I see most people using the shiny craft paper. Would a piece of metal work for this as well? I'm thinking about trying it on a sheet of aluminum, roughly the same size, just more rigid. Yes, should work. Definitely experiment. As long as you're not gonna ruin whatever you're trying to paint on, give it a shot. Next question is from Rea Zach. Love the tutorial just Tutorial just discovered your page. I just have two questions. I'm currently working on Plexi and I'm afraid the scraping might scratch the board. Is there any alternative that would not harm the Plexi? Second, how can I get the paint to dry faster, especially when I have, multi when I have multiple layers to do? As far as etching and highlights on something like a piece of plexiglass or anything that you're worried about scratching, uh, I suppose you could use a really, really light touch when you go in to do it. Um, alternatively, use a little thin brush and paint your highlights on with uh, spray paint off to the side. A little bit of a, you know, a tiny fine tipped brush and you can paint little white highlights and whatnot in. Just as easy as scraping, you don't have to worry about damaging um, whatever your canvas is. 
All right, next up, Adina B. Adina writes, thank you so much. I just started trying out spray paint art and have used your videos as my main guide. They've been instrumental in me getting, off, getting my feet off the ground. I really like how you explain what you do as you go along, as well as why you do certain techniques. Question, when I painted on canvas, I used different colors in the background, but when I scraped off the buildings for the skyscrapers, only the white of the canvas came through. Do I need to have the background colors set and dry a little bit before spray, spraying black over top? Thanks. For any of the scraping techniques, it does help for you to let whatever layers, whatever colors you want to appear more prominently once you do the scraping. Let those layers dry for a little bit. Um, it's going to help the paint adhere to the canvas and it's not gonna come off as easy as the black paint on top. Thanks for the comment, Adina. Subtle Craft writes, for the carving of the mountains, do you have to be using glossy paper? The only reason I ask is whenever I attempt that, it always takes the lowest layer of paint, such as purple, so I usually have to give the paper a base coat of white because the paper I ordered has no gloss. Kind of tough to wrap my head around that one. I would just say make sure you use a glossy surface and you should be fine moving forward. All right, Naming Wen, and I could be butchering some of these names, so I do apologize, writes, I tried this and had a great time referring to a spray paint painting, I'm sure. I did have one small problem though. The black paint was pulling away from spots in the poster board, causing little white circles. Is that a product of the brand of paint that I used? I used the cheap stuff from Walmart. I'm going to try again using better paint for round two. Please let me know. rust -oleum Painter's Touch. Most of my subscribers are in the United States. You guys can find that stuff at Walmart, Home Depot. Um, make sure you use gloss. And then Rust-Oleum Quick Dry Black and White available at Home Depot. I use those for like shading and highlights. They're a, a thinner paint. Um, issues that you are having with black paint pulling away uh, white spots on your poster board. Possibly you could have got some moisture on the poster board. If you get like a drop of water or anything, and then spray on top, when that black paint dries, it's gonna look a little bit weird. That happens a lot if you're wearing a respirator and blowing, just exhaling your breath. You get a lot of vapors and whatnot. Those will build up and drop onto your painting. So you gotta be careful of that. Uh, best, best tip I could give though, is just use Rust-Oleum Painters Touch Gloss and do your best not to mix brands of paint because it might uh, affect the results you get. Next question is from S. Hudson. I am wondering, I struggle sometimes with my paintings feeling dull and not quite popping. Any tips? Best tips I could give here are start to stu study color theory and contrasting colors. Typically, to give something the effect of looking just right and having it pop, uh, you want to use contrasting colors. There's a few different schematics you can use. Um, art theory is not really my greatest strength. I know a bit of it, I've learned some of it, but for the, for the honest, to be honest, I just kind of do my thing and experiment and take note of what works, what doesn't, and make adjustments. So study the color wheel, make sure you're using something nice thin edges for your planets. Make sure you're really watching over spray because that really kind of fogs out, mists out your whole painting. It can really affect, you know, how much it pops or, or it looking dull. So uh, crisp planets, watch the overspray and study some color theory. Make sure you properly use contrasting colors and you should have some poppin' planets before you know it. Next video comes from Natty Dreads. Hi, thanks for your video. Just wanted to know, where did you get your turntable from? I also do spray paint art, but can't seem to find one anywhere in the UK. Did you make it yourself or did you purchase it from a store? In Canada, at least, my turntable is meant for inside of a cabinet or on top of a table and it's called a lazy susan so i found mine at goodwill i believe thrift store possibly furniture shop you can find it uh, it really helps for live spray painting as well as making the videos not having to walk around your whole table just being able to turn your painting so i call it a lazy susan i didn't make it i suppose you could that's where to find one another question here from adina b Thank you, this is amazing. I just tried my first spray paint art tonight and I need some help. Does the poster board have to be glossy? We're gonna skip that one, it's about poster board again. I think we've covered that in depth. 
Christo Klopf. Klopf writes, does anyone know why my colors are bleeding through? Like if I put colors on top of each other before the texture under the coats will show through the last color I applied. I'm using Rust-Oleum two times ultra cover paint and primer. Always work from lightest to darkest when you're layering your colors. That will help big time. Also, certain colors like blues need to dry a bit before other paint goes on top. They just bleed through everything. I can't really explain it too much. So that's what you're looking at there. Lightest to darkest and you'll be good to go. What do you use to record your videos like your stand and setup? So my setup is fairly rudimentary for this video that I am making right now. I'm using a Canon T5i and a giant squid omnidirectional lav mic, which is this thing here. Give you that nice clear sound. When I'm filming my actual paintings, I use this really crappy uh, tripod that doesn't matter if it gets painted. And I've taped a stealth selfie stick on it so I can kind of pan this over my painting turn this, have it looking down, I mount a GoPro onto here and film my videos that way. It works pretty good. It's not really fancy. It's definitely, it's definitely not glamorous, but it works for me. David Elliott writes, this tutorial helps a lot. Do you prefer using plastic bags or magazine paper um, to make textures? I prefer plastic bags. I don't like using magazine paper all that much. I find if your paint dries too much, you put it down, you're left with a big chunk of magazine paper left behind on your painting. Um, the effects are quite different though, so I use a bit of both, but I like bags the most. Corey Morrow writes, silly question, but am I signing with a Sharpie on what spray paint? For signing your painting, uh, I don't use a Sharpie. I use some kind of pointy object a little bit of clear coat to moisten the paint and then I etch my signature in. You can use a sharp HB pencil if you want uh, or clay modeling tool or something with a fine tip point. Uh, but you're not really trying to write on the paper, you're just trying to scrape out the paint. S. Hudson has another question and writes, I uh, would love more tutorials. I tried my first painting tonight, went great until I tried to put Volspar clear coat on top of it, it dripped everywhere before I noticed and it was ruined. You're gonna ruin a lot of your paintings that is part of learning. The beauty is if you're painting on poster board, it's really cost effective, it's not an expensive mistake. Um, and it's just really part of the learning curve. Instead of stressing too much about it not going well, keep painting. Other takeaway I can give you is to stop mixing brands of paint until you're certain or make sure you do that off to the side ahead of time. Um, when you mix brands of paint, sometimes the, the balance and the ratio of the solvents inside the can are different. Sometimes they use different chemicals. Sometimes some are oil-based, water-based, etc. They don't all mix together very well. So make sure you guys are doing the research you need to do before you mess up your painting with making sure that can brand A and brand B match. Because if they don't, you're going to ruin all your hard work. And that's no fun for anybody. Next question here is from Peter Porcaro. Hey man, you totally got me into the coolest thing ever. I have a question though. When I was doing stars in my painting, my gloves started to stick together because of the wet paint. What can I do to keep this from happening? Not a whole lot. You can spray spray paint on the tip of your palette knife and then flick that off to the side and then flick that onto your canvas. Still gonna get a bit on the gloves. Uh, don't sweat it too much. Make sure you use disposable gloves and switch them out often. You should be fine. At least it's not your hands. Next question here comes from Sam Nutson. You probably won't read this, but you inspired me to try spray paint art and it's honestly the most fun I've had in a while. Any tips on how to sell them? I've had a bit of trouble with getting them out there. Selling your art is a difficult thing to get into, I suppose. It's definitely a little bit scary for a newcomer find yourself some kind of local event where you can go and set up and paint live and sell your art. Make sure it's outdoors, make sure the organizers know for sure that you're a spray paint artist that you know deals with somewhat of a stinky medium so you don't get kicked out or anything like that. 
go somewhere, paint live. People are drawn in to the show aspect of this form of art. They're gonna come over, you're gonna sell something. Price them really cheap to start with, work your prices up and you should be good to go. Start yourself an Etsy page, start yourself an Instagram page, post them on Facebook to your friends and write in the caption that it's for sale. You never know who's gonna bite. Uh, just don't be too obnoxious with it, otherwise you might find yourself with less and less friends and followers as time goes on. So don't cram stuff down people's throat too much, um, but definitely try a little bit online, try to do a live event of some kind and see where that takes you. Pedro writes, awesome, bro, can you put the name of your music below please? Especially the one around the 12 minute mark. Uh, I'm not gonna put the exact song on here, uh, but I do use a service called Epidemic Sound and I think it is, I think it's 15 bucks a month for each of my YouTube accounts until you get a certain amount of, of views and whatnot, which I don't have yet, thankfully, so I'm saving some money. But uh, Epidemic Sound's really good. They have like every different genre, tons of stuff. It's been a good music service. It gives some extra pizzazz to the videos. Next question comes from Chris Cox. Uh, it's actually two questions. He writes, how did the stars, how did you do the stars so fast? So many, I have trouble with stars. Um, lots of paint on your finger, flick the globs off to the side and flick from a little bit further back and just kind of let her rip. Uh, I did cover that in the comments section specifically, so hopefully I did answer your question on a more specific basis. Um, next question is how do you package your art for shipping? Poster boards I put in shipping tubes with caps on the end, roll them up really carefully, be very careful not to crease them. Canvas is a little bit more difficult. You gotta make sure that they are really, really cushioned and packaged up so they don't get damaged in transit. Um, but those just basically go in a custom made box with a bunch of bubble wrap and whatnot. And records, I have these little kind of record sleeves that I just pop the record in, seal them up. John Michael Cope asks, is the blow dryer just a spot dryer or does it add another texture to the paint? So in some of my videos, I'm seeing using a blow dryer going over my painting. It is just to set the paint. So what heat does is it uh, cures the paint a little bit and it gets the outer most exposed layer of the paint to dry a little bit faster. Oftentimes what's underneath the black layer or the top layer tends to stay dry. You see a lot of people in spray paint art videos use fire uh, to do this. I don't advise using the fire. It can go back in the can, it is possible. There's fumes all over the place. Adding fire to the mix is not really a good thing to teach people. So uh, I suggest, yeah, using a hairdryer if you can pick up a cheap one and use that in your garage. If not, um, the best, best way to dry painting is airflow. So set up a fan in front of you know, your drying station or whatever, do your painting so the fan's not messing with you, then put your painting there, give it that airflow, that'll dry it out really quick and then you're good to go on to your next layer. No fire involved, very little risk involved. Much better, much safer. Dylan Evan asks where I get my stencils from and I make all my own stencils. Uh, I do have a, a basic tutorial, it's one of my, my first videos on how I make and cut out my stencils and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I make them all. It allows me to make stencil for kind of whatever I want. I don't have to spend my hard earned money paying someone else uh, for the, the service of creating them. But yeah, I cut them all out by hand using a heat tool. Some people use just an X-Acto knife and poster board. Other people use a device called a Cricut, which is like an automated cutter. I do mine by hand, edit them in Photoshop, and then cut them out. Vicwes, Vicwes RC asks, hey, I noticed you do a layer of clear every once in a while. And if I'm correct, what is the significance of the clear, if it is so? I use clear coat to seal the paint when I'm done. It provides a clear protective layer. So when I'm done my painting, I cover the whole thing in clear. Acts almost as like a varnish, I suppose. Um, during the painting, anytime I use clear, it's to keep the paint wet and malleable so I can keep working with it, manipulating it once it's been sprayed on. If you don't do that or you're working in hot climates, your paint will dry very quick and become tacky and you can't really do anything beyond just spraying directly onto the canvas and texturizing immediately. So I use clear coat to buy myself a little bit more time and to make sure my paintings look awesome for a long time. Jesse 
Espejo, Espejo asks, what material did you use as a stencil for the TIE Fighter? Uh, as I just mentioned, I make my own stencils and the material I use is an acetate film that I think is 0 .005 thickness, available at art stores and online, I would say. So acetate film, you can use poster board. Uh, you can use just basically like any clear plasticky stuff that's not too thick if you are doing the same technique that I use, which you can check out in a tutorial that I've done in the past. Probably do for a better produced, more informative tutorial coming up, hopefully in the near future. It's really all of the questions I have time for. I don't wanna drag this video on too, too much. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully the answers to these commonly asked questions give you some perspective or information. If you guys have a future question, leave them in the comments of this video below. I'm gonna be curating any questions asked down below and filming another video very soon for you guys to make sure I stay on top of answering all of your questions. If you enjoyed the video, quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. We're out here, we're learning spray paint art, and we wanna have you along for the journey. Thank you so much, everybody, for 2,500 subscribers. Never thought I'd even get that high. It's pretty cool that you guys are all watching and following along, and I appreciate you all very, very much. Until next time, folks, enjoy your painting, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.